Hi, my name is Philip Day from Credence Publications and the Campaign for Truth in Medicine. I am delighted to welcome Peter Josling um, from the Garlic Centre. Peter's uh, for many years has been doing work on garlic compounds and the extract of uh, garlic, which we're going to talk about today, Alison. Welcome, Peter, and uh, thank, you. thank you for flogging through the gale <laughs> and getting here. Um, now, uh, perhaps you can just uh, first of all uh, explain to the viewers who you are and the amazing news that you've got to share with us today. Sure, Philip. I, I started the Garlic Centre about 20 years ago when I became totally fascinated with this amazing bulb. And, uh, so there was no Garlic Centre before you then? No, no, no. no, no. Nobody, nobody was specifically kind of interested in this stuff enough to be able to get no, into it? No, there's, there's been one or two American experts, but there was never been a European expert. And uh, I get called now the Garlic Guru or the Garlic so you are oh, Mr. Garlic, basically. Uh, basically, yes. And, okay. and I've been lucky enough to work with raw garlic, cooked garlic, and a whole plethora of garlic supplements. And this has fortunately led us to the invention of the first ever stabilised extract of allicin. Allicin, um, for those of you who don't know, is, is garlic's natural defence mechanism. And up until recently, it's been a very unstable chemical that no one's been able to produce in large quantities but with a little bit of chemist chemical knowledge which I, I, I brought to bear and a little bit of luck really uh, we finally managed to stabilize this allicin uh, on a commercial scale and put it into into proper products the nice thing about this sta stabilized allicin extract is that it kills funguses viruses and bacteria without any problem at all and the body seems to accept this natural because we, we know all the problems with side effects with drugs but the the body seems to be able to recognize a natural food in a way that we don't really understand yet and this is uh, why a lot of vitamins that are synthesized can pre present problems as against the natural alternatives when we look at garlic though we're, we're seeing a natural substance where we take the extract out you're saying uh, and we're using that in many many times more potency that you would ever get away with eating the garlic and keeping your marriage sure well, allicin is actually not found in a garlic clove. It's only produced when that garlic clove is cut, crushed, booked, chopped, stir-fried, or whatever, processed. So it's garlic's natural defense mechanism, so it's only ever needed when, when the garlic is being attacked by something. And that allicin is very, very unstable, so as soon as you've made it, it's changing into lots of other chemicals and disappearing. Now, what we've been involved with in the last six or seven years is a process whereby we can actually capture this allicin, stabilize it by diluting it with ordinary water, and that means we end up with an extract of real allicin that has the most... That doesn't decay. Exactly, and it has the most amazing biological properties which we've been researching over the past six or seven years. Does it, does it stink as badly as it the does? It does. I mean, if you, if you chew a clove of, raw, of real garlic, I'll probably lose my voice I'll a watch bit, you so do it's it. a bit dangerous, but... <laughs> Mm. Now you see immediately the allicin is being produced, it's burning the back of my tongue, the back of my throat, but it's disappearing immediately, it's changing into lots of other sulphur compounds and my voice is beginning to go. Um, we'll, get you to, <coughs> we'll get you to inhale a helium balloon in a minute and really have a laugh. Um, so unless you stabilise the allicin, you're not going to be able to utilise it in the human body. And the vast majority of garlic supplements that are available today do not do that, they don't stabilize the allicin and make it available to the body. So they're just basically getting the, the usual de decaying die off and, and very little, very little... Uh... Very little activity. I mean, they have some benefit in terms of some of the other sulfur chemicals that are produced have benefits to the heart and circulatory system. But none of them have ever been tested against killing infectious organisms, for example. Well, I was fascinated reading in your book that allicin has been credited with uh, uh, superb antibiotic activity, anti-yeast, anti-microbial, um, uh, and, and yet this is not being used to any degree in a, a health system beset with MRSA and these other antibiotic-resistant infections. My question is, why would they not use something like this? Well, I think the, the problem here is it's the Medicines Healthcare Regulatory Agency. They perceive garlic as being a herbal treatment, and herbal treatments now apparently can get licensed, but they have to go through all the hoops it's that, that, that one the drugs and a half million have to, to, to Millions, get a license. Yeah. I mean, we've done basic pharmacology and toxicology on the extract, perfectly safe. To, you can take tons of the stuff, and it's not going to do you any harm. Mm. But because we don't have dose dependency studies, we don't have a full toxicology package, yeah, dotting the there's no way is it going to get 
to be a licensed medicine. So, that doesn't mean, however, that hospitals don't use it, because some do. Some hospitals will buy these natural extracts, and in the last four or five years, we've been helping a significant number of patients with wounds that just would not heal, with well, diseases... Well, we've been, we've been looking at some of this latest uh, data that you sent over with people with amputated legs where they were sent home with an infection. And by the way, sent home with an infection. You know, you're in hospital, uh, you've had surgery, the wound's infected, they can't clear it up, so they send them home? They do, I'm afraid that's fairly commonplace. In all, in all aspects of this country, there will be people at home who have wounds and infections that they just cannot treat. And that's where this whole story began. We had a young lady, uh, her name was Deborah Brown, with two wounds on her back that hadn't healed for two years. She was at home. The doctors were expecting to bring her back into hospital to take the metal plates out and replace them. And she said, look, I really don't want another operation. I've had it all once and it didn't work. Plus the chance of getting more infections. Exactly, another infection. So we got hold of her. We gave her the Allison capsules the, and the cream and the liquid and literally fed it. Within six weeks, she was healed and she couldn't believe it. Um, and that's, that's what we've been doing um, ever since for the last four or five your, years. Your book, I, I did a book um, three or four years ago called The ABCs of Disease. So I basically started an acne and went through to varicose veins. Yeah. You've done a similar thing with the garlic book, uh, The Heart of Garlic, Alice and the Heart of Garlic, where you've looked at non-fatal problems that Alison has been shown to help and also some of the more serious issues where we look at cancer and heart yes. disease and, and this type of thing. Um, how do you think that um, people should be uh, reacting to the news that they can actually take a natural antibiotic and not have the kind of immune side effects they would get from, say, one of the fast pharmaceutical preparations? You think you, you, you feel pretty strongly that people should really start to... Uh, I, I can't see why you wouldn't want to take a natural extract, especially if it's a natural antibiotic, because A, it's not going to wreck your immune system, and B, it's not going to destroy any of the friendly bacteria that your body needs to be able to absorb the food and the, the nutrients from the food that you're imbibing. I mean, I was fascinated to read, for instance, about toenail fungus mm. and about um, uh, various types of, um, well, warts and... Well, like uh, you say, you can go from head to toe, because all of those conditions, from head lice to warts to acne to psoriasis to eczema, all of them are complicated by infection by bacterial infection. They cause a secondary infection, which means the condition doesn't heal. So it doesn't really matter what agents you're using. You know, you can be using the, the most expensive creams known to man that people will queue halfway around the block for. Um, if it doesn't kill out the infection, the invasive organism, there's no way you're going to help your acne or your eczema.